Okay, let's now move on to some calculus. So what we're interested in now is how do we find tangent lines to parameterized curves, to points on parameterized curves? The derivative to the parametric curve x equals f of t, y equals g of t, is given by dy dx. But remember, x and y are functions of t. So how do we calculate the derivative? Well, this tells us that we just need to know the derivative of y with respect to t and divide it by the derivative of x with respect to t. Or in other words, it's g prime over f prime. This is nothing more than the chain rule. So let's do a quick sketch of a proof here. What is dy dt? So I'm going to do the chain rule, but I'm going to do it this way. Oh, maybe I should say, before I, before I write down this down, maybe I'll just say by the chain rule. By the chain rule. What's dy dt? Well, dy dt, if y is a function of x, and x is a function of t, then I can write it as dy dx times dx dt. That's our chain rule. In, written in Leibniz notation, dy dt is equal to dy dx dx dt. Now what do we do? Well, now I just notice that what I want to solve for is this thing. So therefore, dy dx is dy dt divided by dx dt. So I divide both sides by dx dt, and I get the formula that I want. So I'm going to put my little box here, end of proof, because, well, we can see from this that once we do the division, we've done. We're done. We prove this result. Okay, so I just wanted to make the connection with the chain rule because it's, it's, this may look mysterious at first, y dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt, but it's nothing more than the chain rule. However, that might not make it easy to remember, even though it's coming from the chain rule. Um, you might think, well, that's still rather difficult to remember. There's one way I like to remember this relationship, and that is, for those familiar, with vectors, you know, maybe from your physics classes, you've done some geometry, or you've worked vectors in some context. So vectors, if for those who are not familiar, you can think of a vector as an arrow with an initial point and an end point. So that's all we're really thinking about here in terms of vectors, is just it's an arrow in the plane starting at some point, ending at another point. So for those familiar with vectors, we can think of the parameterized curve, or its parameterization, as a position vector. So x, y is given by f of t, g of t. Okay? So we're just thinking of this as a position vector. Then we can look at the derivative of this vector, which turns out to be the tangent vector. And that is, just take the derivative of each component. So this would be dx dt and dy dt, and put those together as a pair, as a vector. So that's f prime of t, g prime of t. Now it might not be clear in fact, it probably isn't clear here. This is something you'll actually study in Calculus 3 when you study curves again in greater detail. But what happens here is that at this point, which we'll call xy, which is your f of t, g of t, there's a little tangent vector there, a tangent line. And the tangent line can be given, the direction of the tangent line can be given by this tangent vector. And what's the tangent vector? It turns out it's just f prime of t, g prime of t. So there's that tangent vector that is f prime of t, g prime of t. Now we think of this as a little line. The tangent vector is telling us it's moving from the 
initial point to the end of the arrowhead, it moves f prime of t units in the x direction and g prime of t units in the y direction. So we can get the slope of this tangent vector, which is therefore the slope of the tangent line. What's the slope of the tangent vector? Well, it would be rise over run. What's rise? That's g prime of t. What's run? That's f prime of t. And that's exactly what our formula set up here. So this is a more geometric way to think about it. Um, again, for those familiar with vectors, this might be a natural way to think about it. For those not familiar with vectors, maybe this gives you enough to sort of think about it in a geometric way. However, we'll get into a lot more specific details about tangent vectors and curves in general in Calculus 3. But for our purposes right now, we've got this derivative formula for our parametric curves. Let's go ahead and apply it. We're going to find the slope of the tangent line to this curve. x equals cos of t, y equals sine of t, as t goes from 0 to 2 pi. That's our good old familiar friend, the unit circle. We're interested in the tangent line at the point t equals pi by 4, so that's going to be right here, t equals pi by 4. Our tangent line is going to look like this. And what we're interested in is the slope. What is the slope of the tangent line? Well, our formula above says, to find the slope, take the derivative of the y function, divide by the derivative of the x function. So that's what we'll do. What's the derivative of the y function? dy dt is equal to the derivative of the sine, which is cos of t. dx dt is the derivative of the cosine function, which is negative sine of t. So the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dt divided by dx dt, which is cos of t over negative sine of t. There's our derivative for any point on the parameterized curve. We're interested in particularly the point when t is pi by 4. So at t equals pi by 4, we have that dy dx when t is pi by 4 is equal to cos of pi by 4, negative sine of pi by 4. Cos of pi by 4 and sine of pi by 4, they're equal. They're both equal to 1 over root 2, so this is equal to negative 1. And so the tangent line has slope negative 1 at the point. So at the point corresponding to t equals pi by 4, which we can also get its xy coordinates. So at the point xy equals cos of pi by 4, sine of pi by 4, which is 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. So that was our point there. t equals pi by 4, which had x and y coordinates, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. Our slope, which we can now fill in, was equal to negative 1. You'll now notice that we've got three ways to compute the slope of the tangent line at this point. We could look at it as the upper semicircle, which has an equation y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if we look at it that way, we can apply just our differentiation rules, um, the chain rule because it's a square root function which the, with the 1 minus x squared inside. Just use our normal techniques of differentiating a function of a variable x and plug in the corresponding x value, 1 over root 2. We could look at it as an implicitly defined curve, x squared plus y squared equals 1, and use implicit differentiation and get the slope at that point. Or we can look at it as a parameterized curve and get the derivative in this way as well. So we've got three different ways now to compute the slope of the tangent line to a curve. Let's actually do something that the question didn't ask for here, but I'd like to do it anyway. It's probably one of these things that will come up on the homework assignments, and there'll be lots of questions about it. What about a second derivative? What's the second derivative at t 
t equals pi by 4. Second derivative. Well, how do we do that? Okay, well, the second derivative would be d squared y dx squared. How do we compute that? Well, that's d by dx of the derivative. How do we compute d by dx of this derivative? Remember, the derivative dy by dx is a function of t. So how do we do that? Well, we could do the exact same thing we did to come up with a differentiation formula for parameterized curves to begin with. We could say, well, to compute this, the derivative of this function with respect to x, first compute it with respect to t, and then multiply by dt by dx. And dt by dx is just the reciprocal of dx by dt. So there is a way to compute the second derivative. You compute the, deriv the, the t derivative of the first derivative and divide by dx dt. There's a way to think about it in terms of the formula we had above. Think of it this way. The derivative of y with respect to x was the derivative of y with respect to t divided by dx with respect to t. This y is the function that I'm trying to differentiate. If I look at the second derivative, it's this now in place of the y. So how do I differentiate this function with respect to x? I just differentiate it with respect to t and then divide by dx dt. So it's the same formula above except instead of having y there, replace the y with the derivative, dy by dx. Okay, so the, what that means is we can go ahead and compute our second derivative because it's d squared y dx squared is the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t, so that's d by dt of cos of t over negative sine t divided by dx dt. What was dx dt? dx dt was negative sine t. So that's negative sine t. What's the derivative of cos t over negative sine t? We can use the quotient rule on that. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom. Oh, those two negatives cancel to give us a positive. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Okay, then again, two negatives would cancel to give us a positive cos squared t. And then all of that is over the bottom squared, so that would be a sine squared t. Oh, but there's also another negative sign there, so that would be a negative sine cubed t. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1, so this simplifies down to negative 1 over sine cubed t. What is it at the particular instant we care about? That's when t is pi by 4. Plugging pi by 4 in, we get sine cubed of pi by 4. Sine of pi by 4 is 1 over root 2. So cubing it would be 1 over 2 root 2. So that would be negative 2 root 2. So there's our second derivative. Notice it's negative. What does it mean when the second derivative is negative? In terms of concavity, it means it's concave down. And so let's look at our diagram above. At that particular point we're interested in, yep, the curve is concave down there. So undoubtedly one of the homework questions probably would have asked something about a second derivative for a function, so I just wanted to give an illustration of how one would work out a second derivative in this case, and the kind of information that it gives you. It gives you still, it gives you information about concavity.